I'm busting my ass.
Morning, everybody. Um, not quite 9.30, but unfortunately, I've only got one camera today because we had a little bit of a mishap with the wire for the camera up here, over there, unfortunately. So this week, I'm going to have to just make do with one camera until I can get another adapter wire for the above camera, which I think is going to work out well, I hope. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but we've got, I've got a couple of stands on either side, like this one. And then I've got bars going across the top, which hold the two lights and an additional camera, which I think is going to work well here. I don't know, I have to wait until I get another wire before I can work out the kinks a little bit better because kind of hard to judge until you can actually see it on the screen. Anyway, I apologize for the mix up and the delay. And wanted to show you that it's done. I'm actually looking forward to quilting this one. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun. I'm not gonna rush. I wanna have some fun with it, but hopefully you can see. All of this extra stuff here makes it a little difficult. See, ta-da! I like it. I think it's good. So I'm having fun. I had fun with that one. Okay. Next, if you haven't um, ordered or picked up your February fill in the blank kit, they're ready, and I have them on the website to purchase. So we've got the new ombre towels and all the pieces, including the new white leather and a um, pom-pom pack, which is much more than you actually need to do, um, what does it say? It says, hold on, life is short, eat the cake, which I thought was cute. But the colors on the towels are really, really good. It goes all the way from this almost white to these bright, pinks and lime green on the back. So I like it. I think it's kind of cool. I hope that it becomes a constant and she comes out with even more colors because I think it would be really, really cool. Anyway, I do have a few more kits. They're on the website or you can come in and grab them. And those who have already ordered slash purchased your kits, you can come in and pick them up. I'll post it on Facebook again. Uh, what else? Oh, look, see where did it go? This is not all the colors, but, and it's hard to tell with this lighting is terrible. I am working on getting somebody in here to help me with the lighting. Can you see? This is the box for our Saturday sampler this year. It's not all the colors. There's gonna be a lot, a lot more colors, but. It's gonna be fun. Okay, let's get started. We've got two blocks today, like we do every week. Um, one of them, the first one, we're gonna actually do seven half, uh, not seven, four half square triangles. And in the process, you are gonna save one for block number seven. You're not gonna be able to use all of your extras on the front, but there are a few opportunities where we will be using the extra blocks that we make. Um, the rest I would suggest you can maybe do something like a label on the back or in the corner or something like that. So we're going to have two orange blocks. We're doing um, block five. And so you can see. Ooh. So we're doing block five and it is orange. So we've got a darker, I have a darker orange and a lot of orange, two squares together. You can draw the line diagonally down the center and so a quarter on each side, or like I do using the grid glide on my table. Um, I don't even draw a line anymore. So I've already done that to two and I am going to just, I just eyeball cut in the middle um, if you don't draw the line, one of them, doesn't matter which one, we're going to put aside, we're going to use in block seven, okay? 
And then I just iron them. I really wish I had the other camera because it makes things so much nicer. But next week, sure. As always, best press really, really comes in here like this. Because we're talking a lot of small pieces and it makes it much easier for you to um, piece without them all going crazy on you and stretching. Okay. So I don't know if you can see it, but we've got the, a long cream piece here, a medium cream cream or white neutral on top, one square neutral block, and then three of our half square triangles in the corner that are gonna look just like this. The easiest way, in my opinion, to do this would be to do your four patch down here first together with the, then put the medium white piece on top. And then finally you put the larger cream piece on. So if you guys have any issues or problems or questions with these, please let me know. And I appreciate you sticking with it, uh, even with these little video computer issues. It's, it takes a little while to work out all the bugs. And I change these a lot. Um, I know it doesn't save a ton, but I try to at least, because I just think it seems more in time than anything else. And on this machine, which is a brother, um, when you cut the thread, sometimes if you don't have a piece of fabric to stitch right away, it has a tendency to pull the thread up and unthread the machine, which is why chain piecing, in my case, helps a lot because it helps me keep from having to rethread the machine as much. And then if I lay them back down, Okay, like this. I have a tendency to want to iron the seam away from the white so it's not as noticeable as a shadow, which means this top seam, I'm gonna iron the opposite direction so we can set the seams. And that's the easiest way to line up the seam. I hope everybody's having a good week so far. All right. And I know from this distance, you're not gonna be able to see it, but this top seam is going this way. The bottom seam is going this way. So, Nesting the seams means you're gonna put them right up against each other and you can feel them, they're nice and flat. If they're flat, that means they should be in the exact space spot that you need to to make sure they align. If you can feel it bulky, odds are it's not aligned. So then I'm going to, because I'm gonna start sewing from this side down, I'm gonna put the pin in this seam first and bring it up on this side on an angle. And I do that purposely, no, it's not, it's just something I learned over the years. Um, nobody actually taught me, but I do not sew over pins. And, and I know I say it a lot and I've probably said it a dozen times already, but just the act of taking this pin out sometimes can misalign your seams. So by putting the pin on an angle, I can sew and stop with my needle down right in that seam before I take the pin out. And this weekend we have Kimberbell's Kitchen, Sunday and Monday. If you're local, 
there is still time for you to come and pick up a kit. Um, and I may be even able to, I'm pretty sure I can actually, today would probably be the last day to FedEx a kit out. But it's a, a lot of fun. And I normally have everything behind me, but I put it up front so that everybody could see all the fun projects that we're doing. Perfect. And I'm just gonna iron it. How's everybody doing? Anything fun going on? It's just a whole lot of work. Never ending. Ooh, I do have good news. If you haven't seen it on Facebook. Um, Cloth, Clothworks Good Vibes is coming in tomorrow. Um, at least that's what I got notice of. And I think me and Linda have decided that that's the fabric we're going to use for the next two bag classes in March and April. So now all we're going to do is sew this one on here. So I can't wait for those bag classes. And we already have, and I forgot to bring it back here, but we already have the Super Bloom tote bag, which starts class, starts tomorrow, which will be fun. We do still have a couple of spots left over open for that. You remember right now with everything going on, you have to reserve your spot in advance. And I only allow six people in class and you have to wear a mask. So now this one, I know no matter what I do, I'm gonna get a seam shadow on one of the whites, but I'm gonna actually sew it towards this white because this white is just a little bit thicker than this one. And actually, I'm not going to. It's going to be too bulky. So as I told in the beginning, you are going to end up having to have some shadows. So if there's too much neutrals and light colors in this quilt, not to. Um, and I'd rather have a shadow than too much bulk, especially when it comes time to doing the actual quilting. Because the bulk will make it much harder to quilt. Now, all we have to do is iron this one onto this one. I think these are going to go a lot faster than you think. And I like the blocks. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn some new blocks. Some of them are good. Some of them are a pain in the butt. Some of them are be less of a pain in the butt if the box were bigger, but that's the nature of the beast. Now, again, we're going to iron the seam towards the white. And I set the seam, which means I iron it real quickly while it's folded, just to get it primed and hot. And then I roll it over and iron it again. And just for good measure, we're going to put a little bit of best press starch. Ooh, and I have, ooh, what did, I got a huge order of notions coming in. I'm not quite sure exactly when, but there you go. And I'll let you know, we've got wool mats and needles and basil and, oh boy, what else kind of, I mean, so much, it's, it's a lot. All right. So, this is how it shows in the book that how we assembled it. That's exactly top and bottom. So you never have to worry about how you put it on the row and connect it to the other box. 
if it's laying the same way it is in that picture for how to assemble the block, you're gonna do it perfect, no problems. And I'm just assembling as I go. I'm not too worried about my seams in between the blocks, this first row. Right now I'm just tying them whichever way looking less bulky. You can, if you want to be a little bit more organized, try to iron them all this first row in one direction. And then the second row, you iron them the other. Either way, you are going to come across, no matter how much you plan, an option where you've got a seam going on the bottom row, on the first row this way. And on the next one that you want to try and connect it, you've got the same seam going the other way. So you have to figure out the best method for you. And I'm gonna show you how I put it together without too, too much trouble. When it comes time to do the, the rows. Okay, now we're on block six. Yes, six, which is more orange and white. So we're gonna start with this little two patch. So those together. Have fun with the quilt. I mean, there is no, Let's face it, I'm not the quilt police. I'm not going to tell you what's right or wrong. Um, I want you to have fun and enjoy it and possibly learn a few extra new things here and there, tips and tricks. But this hobby should be fun. It should not be difficult. If it's difficult, then you're doing something wrong. I'm going to keep the darker of my oranges on top so that when I iron that, the seam will be towards the dark. I'm only gonna give you tips and tricks on how to put it together that worked well for me. I have a tendency to more for speed and ease rather than brightness, if that makes sense. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, and I, I hope you can see this, but so our large white strip is up here and we have two medium strips of orange here. We just did our two patch. I'm gonna put the medium strip of orange on top. So that one, once I iron that, then we can put the other orange going vertically. Uh, yeah, vertically to that side. And then all we leave is the other, the larger white strip. Hopefully that makes sense. It'd be much better once I get the camera working again. I still highly recommend you backstitch as much as possible on all of these pieces. This is a lot of blocks to be putting together um, with a lot of time in between. And it's easier if you do as much backstitching now so you don't have to try and go around once you put it on. Oh, this little seam's come a little bit undone. This one's come a little bit undone. That's the nature of most machines, especially um, brothers and baby blocks. Don't ask me why the first couple of stitches, last couple of stitches, you know, whatever you're sewing. All right, old tightest. I'm lucky enough that my brother has an automatic back stitch on the front, and all I have to do is hit a button to do an automatic back stitch on the back, the end, and cut the thread. Okay, that's what we've done so far. Now I'm going to put this one on here, and then we'll be ready for the wait. This was a quick meeting, quick video, and it shouldn't have taken that long, and I wasn't, but. Computers, as much as I understand them and, you know, have a degree in computer technology, oh, it's something that puts uh, a crowbar into the mess. 
don't think I'm going to get a chance to see everybody today because of the time mix up, but that's okay. You have any, if you're watching this after and have any questions, just post them and I'll answer them. All right, only thing left now is to put the white strip on. <laughs> These are really, this is a good pattern and good, great blocks for you to, um, you to learn your seam allowance and affect your seam allowance and your stitching, not only for a quarter of an inch, but also for a scant quarter of an inch, because there are times in this quilt pattern that I did use a scant quarter of an inch, especially when there are a lot of little pieces. All right, let me just iron this. And I'm going to iron this one with the seam towards the orange. So in order to do that, I leave the orange on top. I set my seam where the seam goes towards the orange and top. Crazy, crazy, crazy. There you go. And now I'm gonna put this one on. And we have an opportunity to set our seams. So we did not before because it was one solid piece of fabric, but here we have one matching seam. Okay. And by so by ironing this seam towards the orange, because this seam here is towards the white, they're already nesting. It doesn't always work out that way. And sometimes I have to re-iron blocks and seams. But it really is gonna help you in the long run. By the time you're done with this quilt, if you keep trying to nest your seams this way, you're gonna get really, really good at lining up your seams like really good. This is a perfect quilt for honing in on your skills, on the basic skills, you know, your seam allowance and lining up your seams. Not to mention it's kind of fun. And by doing just a couple of blocks a week, yes, it's gonna take a while, but um, it's not taxing, it's not hard. And I just kept everything up on, on the wall while I was working on it. It was easy. All right. There we are so far. Um, yeah, that's the top. There you go. Look at that. Even when you have the white on whites and the neutrals, trying to line up your seams, um, it makes a big difference in the overall. I think when you look at it from far away, it'll make a big difference. Man, yeah, see this lighting is terrible. It's a little bit hard to tell, show you, but you can see it with the orange for sure. All right, I think that's it for today. And I can go back to work and on. Um, the five zillion other things that I need to do. Hopefully by next, actually I gotta have this done by Saturday because we've got the Kimberbell's kitchen this weekend. But hopefully it works out really well. I'm hoping that 
that camera looking down will be able, I'll be able to zoom in on here and see it without it keep knocking over. I hope that's the plan. All right, that's it for me today. I hope you have a lovely day. And if by some chance, and I don't know if it's gonna happen, but there's always a possibility that Goob's Vibes comes in a day early. Sometimes it happens. I'll let you know. Have a great day. Have a great week, everybody. And you know where I am if you need me. Bye.